Hey guys, I'm going to show you a little project that i got going on here. This is the Wife's 2013 Jeep Wrangler. Um, I think it's got a head, cracked head gasket. Uh, she cracked the radiator, or it, it, it cracked. Um, it's 2018, so five years cracked. Lost all the water while she was driving it. The thermometer went high, and then because it had no water, it dropped off. So if the thermometer is not in water, she goes, oh, it's fine. So she kept driving it. So now I've got major issues but let me show you what I got here this isn't a bad project um, I'll show you some stuff uh, you could probably do this at home with not that many tools and not that much technical competency all right so what I've got this is where I'm held up now is uh, the camshaft there's a tool to it wedges in there and then there's a little pin and it locks it and takes the tension off so you can loosen up this cam and uh, read other books but basically I have to line these two marks up these two have to go this way and then what you do is you paint these and the chain and then you drop them off these come off and the cams have to come out to get to the head bolts um, that's where I'm at but you can kind of see everything I got and one of the symptoms this is the thermostat housing here and when I pulled this there was no water in it and uh, where's the heater hose uh, the heaters right there and actually I don't know if you can see that there's a little bit of coolant still in there so it was full to the heads but not the whole engine um, a couple tips doing this if you look you see all the blue tape around that's all labels for my different wires um, this project isn't going bad I've got to get to this level I've got five to six I call union hours in very relaxed taking coffee breaks lunch um, I took out the battery tray to get to this side I don't know if I had to but uh, it's making accessing this a lot easier um, if you do a Wrangler there's a bracket over here and this is the hardest thing I've had problems with is getting it off and just getting my hands in there um, otherwise, it's actually been a dream to work on. Maybe because it's aluminum, but uh, all the bolts are coming out really easy. Um, but that is a word of caution when you put them back in. Check the torques because you don't really, really be gentle in aluminum because you'll strip it out really fast. Um, I'll show you some things too about this engine. This is a Chrysler 3.6 liter Penstar. And um, see that there? That's the exhaust into the catalytic converter, and I couldn't figure it out. There's no exhaust manifold or heads on this. The exhaust is actually cast into the head. Um, and then there's two bolts on top and two on the bottom. And really the only two on the top bolt in. The other two are like a, like a clamp. Really, really weird design. But um, if you're gonna take on a project like this, the biggest thing is to be thorough. Take your time with it. Label everything because then you'll get it back together. And just an idea this is this is all the tools I've I've used um, these have come in really handy uh, for those that pain in the ass bracket I was telling you about and uh, these are the only tools I had to buy some torque spits and a 27 millimeter um, oh and these go go pick up a set of these this will save your day um, this will probably save me an hour there are so many little wiring clips that clip into everything and this just gets in there and pops them out and this is like $4.99 Harbor Freight. I think this was $4.99 and this might have been $5.99. But uh, all in all, I've got, you know, 20 bucks worth of real tools. And uh, like I said, for that cam follower, or for that, yeah, that cam tensioner, that's about $100, $105 on eBay. I paid to express ship it. And there's a, when you take these off, there's a plastic wedge that goes in here. And, um, lock sets because these have to be torqued down um, to come out and basically these come off and then you pull the cam up and then you can get to the head bolts and uh, it's ready to come out there's there's a couple that push through by the book you're supposed to pull the whole timing cover off I'm not doing it you can see there's other people that ha have it online they call it the pen star 3.6 shortcut and um, try to put a link to those videos in there I probably spent an hour watching it last night um, he did it in a minivan, so the Jeep's a little different as far as what brackets have to come off. But um, really, really not a hard job and, and not a lot of special tools so far. Um, 
I haven't done a job like this since I was a kid with my dad on a Chrysler 318. And um, really, I just remember that being a lot harder. Um, this with all the aluminum bolts, everything's coming right apart. And um, you know, the, the electrical connectors come apart so easy now for the most part. Um, not a bad job. All right, let's see. Uh, hopefully I got a video for you. Should have the tool coming in tomorrow and the head's off and I'll show you what we got. Okay, so where I'm at is uh, the driver's side head is off. I did not have to remove the timing cover. There's uh, other videos on how to do that. It is hard to break this seal. Um, I ended up prying it there and there. Well, yeah, you can see my screwdriver right there. And um, I'd be, I was very careful to not get on the graph circuit surface, just kind of on the edge, pry it apart. Um, one trick is I took out this inner fender well, and the reason is you can't get to these, um, it's the easiest way to get to the exhaust bolts on the bottom or the catalytic converter bolts. Um, so that's heads off and I did find something. I'll show you what we got. And uh, so this is the water jacket here. And look, you don't have, see how you have a nice carbon ring around there? That means it was sealed, but it broke there. And I think it broke there. Um, so these two cylinders were leaking. Um, see it on this side too. Um, you know, kind of separated. Um, not exactly sure how the new gaskets are, but we've got separation there. I don't know if that's old or is that's from the overheating. Um, and now I got to check the alignment on these heads and the block and see where we're at. But uh, yeah, that gasket's bad but I got a new one. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the only trick. Take that fender well out. I don't know if it's gonna do as well on the passenger side. All right, gonna do an update video. I'm stuck. Um, you can't take the passenger side or right cylinder head off without pulling the timing cover. And to pull the timing cover, you need to pull the balancer down there and you need the special tool. I tried wedging a screwdriver in there. I didn't like where I was going. I didn't want to crack, uh, crack the, anything because that's just gonna make it worse. And let me show you why. This head is, it's loose. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's up a few thousands on both sides. I thought I had it, fought with it for a while yesterday. And there's one bolt and it's that guy right there. And it's not in, I didn't see it in the Hayes manual, I didn't see it in any of the online reviews, I didn't see it anywhere. But on the left side, there's enough room to get a little wrench in there and pull that out. And on this side, there isn't. So the whole timing cover case has to come off to do that. Now what I'm guessing is, if you're going to do that, you probably don't need the other Miller tools that I spent $125 to rush ship them here to do the uh, chain tightening uh, to, to unload the chains. So, you know, I didn't see this else anywhere online. Hopefully you guys see it. Um, it's ready to come up. Otherwise, this exhaust, whew, man, that exhaust was tough. Um, really don't like that one bolt. We'll see how it goes back together. But I'm just stuck. I ordered that. I rushed it. It's going to cost me another... 115 to have that rushed here and I could pull that because I it, it just don't, it doesn't want to come off um, without that tool you know the whole engines rotating and, and you really don't want to do that um, trying to keep these camshafts aligned here as best as I can uh, it has moved a little bit but really don't want to move that alignment much but man just this project's not going as well as I hoped it is and it isn't I gotta say all the bolts on the engine have been great, except for exhaust bolts. And probably any car you're gonna find, you're gonna have problems with exhaust bolts. So that's uh, where I'm at today. And uh, it's ready though. I mean, hopefully I got it back together in six or seven hours after this. All right. Okay, so I finally got the passenger side or right side head off. And man, this was a nightmare. And um, the other head's done, it's been done for days. And uh, let me show you what kills you on this. First, well, 
we've got it. I haven't taken the gasket out where you can see where it's blowing by. There, 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 there. This one was shot and it had to come out, so I'm glad I did it. And you have to take the timing cover off. And the reason is you've got a torque spit there that you cannot get out without the timing cover off. And then you've got this dowel pin that holds the chain holder on and you cannot get that off without the timing cover. Now, I think I told you, you had to buy that other tool. You don't, because once you get to this step, basically you need this tool to remove the crank balancer. And I uh, really didn't need that other tool. But, uh, oh, and don't pay attention to this bracket. That, I stole that off the other side of the engine to help me pull it out. But this side, 10 times harder than the other side. Um, if you have to do both heads, you might as well go ahead and pull the timing chain cover anyway. Um, and definitely make sure you mark that chain because it wanted to fall off when I did that. So I'm really glad I marked that because if you don't get that right, you're fucked. Um, and we'll have to put all new gaskets and seal all this. And it, it did take some work. It was hard to, you, you, have, you don't have to take the whole oil pan off, but you do, you've got five bolts along the front there that have to come off. And then uh, this tensioner is a lot different than the other one. It's just very springy. Uh oh, didn't mean to do that. I'll put, put that back together. Um, but it doesn't have a lock, so this side's easier to do like that. All right. All right, it's running. Um, no leaks yet. I'm getting a little bit of exhaust, or it might be the oils from my skin coming off the exhaust on both sides. I'm not sure if that's coming off the camera. I'm not too worried about it. Nothing's touching it. I think it's just uh, you know residual skin oils and cleaning and everything else. All right, so the project's finally done. Um, took me a lot longer than I thought. I'd say probably 25 hours altogether. Um, car started right up though. I don't think it turned four turns before it started, which I was amazed. So um, you have to have these tools to do this job and it held me up and I probably lost a lot of time with that so I want to show you these two are this is 10202-1 10202-2 left these are the camshaft phaser locks and um, you need both of these to take the camshafts off you don't need the little uh, removals if you're taking the timing cover off and you're doing both heads you don't need them so you can save yourself probably 50 bucks. These I think are 50, 60 bucks. This is, was about 70, 75, something like that. And this is Mopar part number 10198A. This is the crankshaft balance removal tool. And um, to take the timing cover off and to take the, cam, the crankshaft balancer off, you have to have this. There's no other way around it. Um, just just go ahead and buy these two tools before you start order them online uh, I paid for rush shipping probably cost me 50 bucks because I ordered them separately don't do that but the car is running um, running great this this is kind of neat let me show you this so car the car is moved I put cardboard under it last night after I ran it to see if anything's leaking and no leaks but, uh, check this out I don't have, <laughs> I don't have bolts here uh, let's see where is it no, not there. Uh, can we get a shot of this? There it is. There's no bolts in there. Look at that. Obviously, it's behind the frame, so I really can't see. But, uh, yeah, the exhaust collector doesn't even have bolts. Check that out. Wild. I'm going to put some bolts in, but it ran. Didn't leak. All right, that's the end.